This is a cool little application that you can build here within Power Apps or a little function within an application that you can build within Power Apps. Notice here I have send an email, add a task or note, and add an attachment is what that one is. But here we're going to focus on this send an email today in this video. When we click on this email here, we can just send this. We'll just say sample three, sample four and send it. Now what it's going to do is it's going to capture the name of this task, which we can't see right now. It's right back there, test 1300. It's going to email our comments as well. We just put in two of them here. This is a very simple way to do it. You can do this many different ways, but I'm just trying to show some of our folks the easiest way to do it. And here you can see it mailed it from me to me. Um, and we have sample three and sample four. So those are the two paragraph entries. And if you look in your sent items, you can see that um, the sent items will have that as well here. I don't know why it's not showing right now. Oh, because we're on the wrong inbox. Um, if you go to the sent items and I'll open that up in the video so you can see where it sends out. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what this looks like in the code. This is very simple to do. So stay tuned. We're going to jump right to it. Alrighty, so I didn't show you in the introduction. There it is right now, sending out. So we actually sent from our email that we're using within Power Apps is where it sends it out from. So whatever that email address is that you're working on, you're signed into your Office 365 environment, that's the email it's gonna send from. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look and see how to build this out. We're just gonna click on this. This is a, a, just a pop-up here. So let's look at the pop-up first. Here, we're just going to go ahead and click on it and then we can easily find it right here and it's called pop-up email send. And so that pop-up, we need to first create that and we need to do that over here in the on start. Okay, so you just wanna put in the on start here and I don't know which, there it is right there, good. So you'll wanna put this in right there. Okay, so pause the video again if you need to, to take notes here. But here you just wanna put in, this is on start of the app. Now on start of the app. You could also put this in, and I'll show you, you could also put this in right here on visible. So I'll show you that example here in just a minute. But here, this is what you wanna put in right here. Now I name all of my pop-ups pop, and I name all of my collections COL and so on and so forth. So this one right here, I just gave it this name. You give it any name you want. This is the variable name right here. This is um, what we're gonna use, okay? It's a global variable in this case. And then we're setting it to false, meaning that we wanna set it out of the gate to false, meaning it's not gonna show up. You could also do that here on the form itself now i happen to be on a form but it could be any page by the way this is just a banner at the top of the page so it could be literally anywhere i happen to be this happens to be a form but here if you go to on visible let's see if there's any on here i have an update okay so here's some collections that i do for this app right here so you could do that set right here inside of here right so, and then name your variable and go on from there. The only thing to remember here is if you do it in the app, you need to do a right click and say run on start, okay? And if you do it here inside of the form on in the on visible, that means anytime anybody goes to this screen, meaning it's visible, on visible. So to see that, that working, you're gonna have to click on another screen and then go back to it and then then it will work. And so if we look at this variable right now, we can go into our variables. I'm just clicking on the three dots here. Okay, and you can see it's somewhere in here, um, global variables. All right, and then you can see it, um, I'm for, there it is right there, pop email. It happens to be set to true. So why is it set to true? Because this is open, okay? Now, continuing on that strand with the variable, let's go ahead and select this and see what it is that we're doing. So we're setting right here, pop email to be true, true, okay? And then when you look at this cancel button right here, pop email's false, 
Okay, so these variables aren't that hard to build and pop-up screens, not that hard to build. So I know I've just gone over setting up the variables so far. We're gonna talk about how to set up the actual pop-up here in just a moment. But setting up the variables is easy peasy, okay? So if you're intimidated by them, don't be. It's really not that difficult. Remember, you could do it here in app, which is on start, or on the screen itself, which is on visible, and you just run that set command or collect or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, in this case, we're doing a variable for this. Now, how does that make sense? How does it relate to the pop-up itself? That's a great question. So I know you'd ask it if you were here. Notice here that the email, excuse me, all of the contents of this pop-up is in a group. And if I click on the group itself and I go to visible, not on visible, but visible, notice that it says pop email delivery, okay? Now, I was a little sloppy here. I named this pop email send. Usually what I do for my groups, let's take a look at another example here real quick here. And I'll show you, it's, it's easier, I think, to name them right here. So this group right here um, is another pop-up, okay? So let's go ahead and go into there real quick. And we're just gonna click on that. And there's another pop-up and you see it right there. Now let's see if I did it inside of the on visible. I probably didn't usually, yeah, I did not. Um, it's inside of the app right here, the on start and the app. But, but let's look at this right here. Group is compare. So notice here in this pop-up with this variable, I can do all functions, right? I'm performing functions within here. I can set the this to different. So I can, I can do like comparisons and things like that. That's what the whole purpose of this pop-up is. Notice here, I've also got it kind of, so when I add additional text, I'm not done with this screen, but I'll have some additional information over here and you'll be able to kind of see it in the background. So, but let's get back to the variable. Let's not get off track here. So look at the variable itself again. We grouped it. Notice everything is grouped together. Even the drop downs that I have within the variable and these functions right here, which are some sum functions, they all work here as well. So you just build this thing out, this screen, just like a normal screen, like you would anywhere else. But when you group it together, it then turns it into something different. So let's go ahead and look at visible here, turns it into what could be a pop-up visible. Notice here that it's pop compare. Notice here that it's group compare. GRP for group compare. So if I had to add a new element here, for example, I might go like this. I would name it exactly the same thing again. Okay. So I don't know if that's helpful, but hopefully you're seeing kind of the purpose behind the variables and how they work with pop-up screens but let's go into the whole purpose of this video which is is to uh, take a look at that email so let's go back to the email now you should be experts on how to do these pop-ups but what about the content of the pop-up so this right here is just a normal look at that just a text input right right here text input same thing as these these are just normal text inputs that's the email address that's a message, okay? That's the rectangle. And this guy here, whoops, is right there, okay? Text email message one. Now he happens to be um, outside of that. And I don't know, oh, that's because I wanted to show you that, okay. So if we look at this guy here, notice here, text email, text message one, we're gonna to go to his visible. Now let's see what it says. Pop mail delivery. So do you have to have it in a group? You don't, okay? So I wanted to kind of show you that. I like to keep it in a group because it keeps sanity for me. So when you kind of look down through here, you can see everything else is in the group. You can see the, I'm pointing at my screen, which you can't see, you can see the anchors there, right? Everything except for 
this guy here. So what do you do? So you just kind of double click on him, control C. Now you go here to this one, which is outside of the group. And then you hold down your control key, click him. Now you have them all. Now go to group. And now notice as soon as it goes to the group, it changes its name. Just double click control V as in Victor to repaste it. Now it's the same. And when we look at this, now notice it's inside of the group. Now, how do we make sure? So this is how to add another box when you're building on this thing. Let's go to visible. Notice it retained its variable name. Okay, now it could have it just as easily um, changed to, um, to not have that visible variable in there. So you, you'll have to check that out. So I'm gonna change this to pop email delivery, okay? So this is my group for that pop-up email delivery, okay? Pop email delivery. All right, now, so you get all the content together, you put the screens the way you want. I'm gonna go over how to send this email, which is the, sim the easiest part of this whole, this whole video. And, um, and then now you have all of your boxes, everything you want. So you built this all out first, then you grouped it together like we have. You made your visibles here. And now let's go ahead and look at the programming just for these things. First of all, we wanna set that pop email to false because right now, because we clicked on here, it happens to be set to true. We wanna set it to false if they hit cancel. That's easy. And then here's the send code. So let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. So this right here is a connector. Office 365 Outlook Send Email V2. If you go over here to your data, you'll see I have mine loaded, but you can say right here, you can say Office 365. I don't know if it's gonna show up uh, because I have mine loaded. Let's go ahead and go down to it right here. Um, where is he? This guy right here. Office 365 Outlook right there. See it? So that's the one that you want to load. Unfortunately, I already have it loaded. So you would just go here and say Office 365 um, Outlook. Okay. But um, I already have it loaded, so it's not going to show up. Okay. But that's how you do that. It's the Office 365 Outlook, then dot send email, version two, text email address. That's the first one right there. Do you see it kind of highlighted under there? Okay. Active task. Now this is text that we want to add in the subject of the email message. This is the subject of the email message. Var edit task happens to be a variable that I collect and then I'm pulling from it task name, okay? Now, this could be right here, this could be the name of a, um, and if you see here, here's var task, okay? It's pulling a whole bunch of data. This could be the name of your list, for example, okay? I happen to be doing it from a variable, but you could do it from a list. This right here, text email message, um, is this guy right here. Text email message, right there. Okay, and then this right here is the and symbol, and this means um, that we're gonna go down, okay? Return, return, okay? And then another and, and the message one. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these. This might make it easier for us. So let's go ahead and just run this. We're gonna hit send, okay? And we're gonna go back to it. And then let's see what the results actually, oh, here's the results right here. Notice how we have some space right here. That's what this is right here. Oops. That's what these are, carriage returns, okay? And then we're gonna put in the text email message one dot text, text email message one dot text, okay? Which is this box. So we're saying that we're gonna go ahead and grab that. That's our second. Right, so we're putting this one in, dot text, and carriage return, carriage return, and we're putting in the second box of information, and carriage return, carriage return, and carriage return, carriage return. 
Now, notice there that you have two sets of carriage returns. Notice that it's a little big right here. Let's go ahead and clean that up a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and take this out, just kind of so you can see, okay? So we're gonna take that piece out right there. So it's just gonna do one set of carriage returns, name, carriage return, email, address, phone number, okay? Then we end that, we set pop email delivery, that's a variable, we're gonna set it to false, and then that's it. Why are we setting it to false? Because we want it to go away when we're done. Let's go ahead and we'll put this as final sample. And we'll do this one as well, final sample. Okay, and hit send. And we'll go over to the email box and it will go pretty fast, by the way. There it is right there. Now notice that it's nice and clean, it's easy, right? Active task. And this, by the way, took the task name. So if you look in here, task name, it's gonna pull that data. You can pull from any of these fields, anything that you want. So if you want like an instant status report, for example, maybe you're working on a task for somebody or you have some data you want, this is very, very, very flexible to use. So I would strongly suggest that you use it. It's very simple to use. And then you can send email messages with um, very little issue. It makes it very easy also when you send this to follow up then back in your tasks. So this, this works great for people that you're working with on tasks that are not part of your environment as well. So anyways, hey, good luck and we'll talk to you soon.